Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. For this particular video, I'm going to introduce three different characters. And, uh... They are all very potent in their own right, if that makes any sense. And I am trying all that I can to make this video worth it for you guys. So just bear with me. Here's the first character I'm going to introduce. Here it is. Reaper. Real name, Buried. Height, Buried. Weight, Weightless. Status, Antihero. In spirit of passing. Base, Mobile. Intelligence, five brains. Behavior. Gloomy and disappointed. She never needs to eat, drink, sleep, breathe, or blink. The only thing she cares about is finding those who are meant to pass. Lethality. It's almost impossible to escape from her. Weaknesses. She's a sore loser at video games. She's unable to make certain spirits pass due to particular circumstances. Powers. She could go anywhere in the universe if something must pass. She always carries a cosmic scythe that can only be lifted by those with enough power. She has immortality, duplication, mass alteration, martial arts, and coma inducing halitosis. She also knows the desires of your heart and soul. Eyes deep red, hair deep black and flowy. Origin. Ever since there was mortality, there had been Reaper. She appears to have red eyes, long black hair, and pale skin that's cold to the touch and smells of a morbid husk. She wears a hooded black robe that covers most of her body due to most of her torso being but bones and a few inactive organs. The only patches of skin are parts of her arms, feet, head, and neck. Throughout existence, she travels the universe to those who are intended to pass into the next life. She once attempted to dissolve Dentrony on one of her travels, but with some help from Pym, she was defeated and escaped as a cloud of shadows. Afterwards, Reaper was disciplined by the demonic Satana for attempting to sacrifice her granddaughter, reminding her that she could only direct those when they need to be directed in order to keep the balance and scales of the cosmos from tilting out of place. Costume. She only wears a black hooded cloak. Teams, solitary, or with others. Word inspiration, the Grim Reaper. I hope that's a decent one for you guys, and here's the next one. Just so you could, you know, it's your choice. Sand Girl. Real name, Sandra Manning. Height, 6 feet, very. Weight, 165 pounds, to vary. Status, hero, and master of sand. Base, every desert in the default earth. Intelligence, 3 braids. Behavior, witty and sneaky. She'll do anything to protect the innocents. Lethality, she's completely unpredictable. Weaknesses, she sometimes struggles when using her powers. Powers. She could turn all or part of her body into sand. She can add or deplete her sandy anatomy, can shape parts of herself into a useful weapon for most problems, can spawn a series of sand servants, can form quicksand, and can project streams of sand from her hands. She could also blow particles of sand into the eyes of her opponents, leaving them blind. Eyes. Vivid green. Hair. Bright tan. Origin. Sandra Manning was a young girl who once went on a tour of the Sahara Desert. However, the people in tour bus were destroyed by an Egyptian dune worm, leaving Sandra as the only survivor. Later, Sandra ended up dying of dehydration after a while of walking, and a few miles away was the Fortress of Heroism, where Pym recovered her corpse and decided to bring her back to life. But a few sand particles got caught in the process, and Sandra came back with a variety of sand-based powers. 
soon, Sandgirl learned that Kelvin, Chimera, and Herculea were in the South Pole attempting to freeze the planet, and after a while of fighting them, Sandgirl was able to defeat them. Since then, Sandra was marked as a hero and will since do anything to protect the innocents. Costume. She wears casual clothes, but she can also cover herself in solidified sand when necessary. Teams. Solitary or with other heroes. Original inspiration. Marvel's Sandman. I hope that one was decent for you guys, and here's the last one. Just bear with me, please. Tall Tessa. Real name, Tessa Starman. Height, 1,250 feet. Weight, unrevealed. Status, hero, and expert model. Base, two Earths, mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, loving, protective, and seductive. She's always an advocate for beauty. Lethality, only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses, low awareness and rejection. Powers. She has a huge size, immense strength, cosmic beauty, and possesses some uncanny persuasion skills. Eyes deep blue, hair vivid blonde, luscious, and flowing. Origin Tessa Starman was a young model who wanted to be more beautiful than she already was. One day, Tessa was visited by D. Jin, and after she wished to become as beautiful as she personally wanted to be, Tessa got fused with a titanic size, along with her increased beauty. Naming herself Tall Tessa, she went out and helped Queen Beatrix with a battle against her evil counterpart, Bad Beatrix. Since then, Tall Tessa was marked as both a grand hero and a good ally with Queen Beatrix. Costume. She wears all kinds of outfits, regardless of style. Team Solitary with Queen Beatrix and other heroes. Original inspiration, Womanhood. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those three characters, and I hope it's worth it for you guys. Just so you know, as of right now, as we speak of me doing this right now, my parents are hanging out in Florida because it's snowing in April still, believe it or not. And here's another fun fact. Not only have I had 11 views in the United Kingdom, I also... For the past month now, have 10 views in India, of all places. That means that I am available in the Taj Mahal area. And um, I really enjoy the glory and such. You know, I am completely fine with the number of views. It's just I feel like I need more subscribers and such. You don't have to. And plus, the reason why I say that it's your choice, whether or not you would like, subscribe, and such, is because I don't want to seem desperate, and I want to spare you guys any conflict and such. I don't want to be a waste of your guys' time, and I'm trying to be uh, relatable and considerate, if that makes any sense at all. So, it's your choice, whether or not you would like, subscribe, and comment down below. Just keep that in mind. I don't want to smear it in anyone's faces. I just want to do you guys a favor. I just don't want to be a burden on your guys' behalf, because I know you have your own things, and I'm just trying to avoid being a problem, you know? So I hope you guys had a decent April Fool's Day, and I hope you guys have a fine rest of the month and so forth, and all that stuff. Until next time, and transmission. <laughs>